about that. So error is, is one of them. And, and, uh, and, and so we'll go back over them since they won't have heard this. And that is water, air, food, and light are necessary for, uh, for uh, your life. Now, the thing about, uh, about light is, is, is that a lot of people don't realize it, but the chemical uh, the intake of light is so very important uh, that, um, you know, if you go without light, then, uh, then there's nothing, there's not even any reflection from the moon. Uh, there's no warmth for the earth. Everything is dependent on that, uh, on that. And so just be aware that, that you need these four things to survive. And like I said, I, I just expanded this out and thought, well, let's just look at God's word and let's let it prove itself as to what it is. Now, now here's the thing that it all is based on. And that is, is the great I am. Jesus said he was the I am. Okay. When, when, back when, when Moses was, was, uh, was in the, in the, the wilderness in the, in, before he ever was called to go to Egypt to talk, he, he, he approaches this burning bush and, uh, and God, he asked God, what is your name that I can go tell them? And he's, God said, I am. Tell them I am has sent you. Well, that word I am is the translation basically of what, where we get the word Jehovah God, or th that, is in, that is an important name of God. And it's interesting how many times Jesus used that word, though, that phrase, I am, as his own. Why is that? Why would Jesus take the God the Father's, how many? Okay, seven times? <laughs> Imagine that. Seven times. Isn't that something? Anyway, the, anyway, the, the, the point that is here is, is that he is the I am. He claimed it over and over and over again. So he says, the first thing he says is, I am the living water. Okay, what did we need? We needed water for survival. And so, and so what is 64 ounces a day that a, that a human needs? Well, actually, we need him as the living water in our lives. Jeremiah 2.13 says, For my people have committed two great evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of the waters, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that have no water. See, when a human really go, tries to go without Jesus, he's actually a possessor of a broken cistern that not only has no water in it, it can't, it can't hold water. So you need that, that cistern with water in it. He says in John 7, 37 through 39, on the last day of the feast, that he says that, hey, that great day, Jesus stood up and cried out if any, and by the way, he did this at the very time they were pouring the, the water from, from the offering in, in, in at, at tabernacles on the last day. As they were pouring water, he stood up and yelled out to the crowd. He says, I, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, okay, so we know that the water is a representation of the Holy Spirit, whom, whom those who believed in him were to receive, and yet, and as of yet the Spirit had not been given to them because Jesus was not glorified. So ever since Jesus resurrected from the grave, the Holy Spirit has been sent into our lives as a, as a promise of God, but he is a river of living water given to us from Jesus Christ into our lives and out of us flows living water. Why? Why would we do that? Why would the Spirit of God need to flow out of us? And it, the only answer has to be because everyone else around you needs the Holy Spirit's presence in their life to draw them to salvation. There is no other way. You have to have water. You have to have the living water that Jesus Christ alone offers. He's the source of life. He's the abundancy of, of overflowing life. The living waters of God, it's the source of that Holy Spirit, which overflows to others around us 
and overflows into the lives of everyone we meet. Do you realize that when you are in the presence of someone else, your, your life overflows into their life? It, you know, we can sit around and say, oh, I'm not usable of God. It, it, don't, don't worry about being usable. Just absolutely turn loose and realize that the Holy Spirit will do it for you. He overflows out of your life into the lives of others, okay? So he says, I am the living water. He is, because he is God, Jehovah God, he is God the Father, he's God the Son, he's God the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has given you that spirit to flow out to others. He also said, he said, I am the breath of life. Okay, we need, we need breath to be able to live. We need air to be able to live. We need that respiration. Now, what happens in respiration? I didn't write this down, but just note this. When you, when you are in the process of respiration, you take in oxygen. That's most, most people, that's all they think about. You breathe, breathe in pure air. It, the rest of the respiration cycle is, is it goes into every part of your body and interacts with those cells and it does two things. It infuses the blood through the blood system. It infuses oxygen into the cells and takes the waste products out of those cells and puts it back in the transport to the lungs. And when you breathe out, you breathe out the bad. Okay. So you're breathing in the good and you're breathing out the bad. By the way, do you, do you realize that the name Yahweh is that respiration process? Yahweh. In your life, he breathes in the great, the good. And you breathe out the bad because that's what his name is, Yahweh. Okay, so what, just remember that as you do so, you are experiencing that interaction to where the good of, the, of God is coming in and whatever has, has, has been uh, used up or defiled or is no longer necessary is, is wasted out through the breath as well. You breathe in, you breathe out. You breathe in, you breathe out. So he says, he says in Acts 10, 17, 24 and 25, and God who made the worlds and everything in them, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, neither is he served by human hands, for he, as he needed anything, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives all mankind life and breath and everything. So God is, a, is, is the one who gives you that. Genesis 2, 7 says, Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into him the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. When he created Adam on the ground, he scraped together this dust and he and he formed them formed Adam on the ground in the act of creation. And then he didn't just leave him there on his own. He breathed into him the Holy Spirit of God. That's what that's what the, the word the word spirit is best translated as breath or breathed. God breathed the scriptures into those men and they, and they wrote them. God breathed into Adam the, the, the spirit of life and he became a living soul. Do you see that we need God so much that he, as we, he, he, Adam got up and started walking with God and talking with God and interacting with God in that process, guess what? When, the, when, the, when God breathes into that dead man of sin that you used to be, and he breathes the Holy Spirit into you as a, as a dead person, you came alive in God. You came alive with the Spirit of God in you because He breathed into you. And He says we, we, we need to realize we, we walk with Him and we talk with Him and we interact with all the creatures around us and we are the presence of the very Spirit of God everywhere we go. You are an ambassador for Christ. doesn't say you ought to be. You are. Why? 
Because everywhere you go, God is going to use you to interact with others. And in that, in that process, others are supposed to be, as Adam was, was seeing, the, the, the reproduction of other Christians is what we need to be doing. We, there is nothing more important in our church than the bringing others to Christ whether we do it ourselves or whether we offer to someone in an orphanage to, and, they, and they bring them up knowing Christ and they come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that is as much interaction as anything else. We are to interact in any way we can to win others to Christ. Now then, I got, I, I got, I got a question. I told you, and I didn't think of this when I wrote this, but just think about this. You breathe in the good and you breathe out the bad. Okay, you're supposed to leave the bad out. You're not supposed to breathe it back in. It's not healthy for you to put a bag over your head and breathe and breathe and breathe because you'll start breathing that bad back in and pretty quick, you'll be in trouble, okay? So, so the thing that you've got to, and I don't recommend that you take a plastic bag and put it over your head and find out, okay? Please don't do that. Just understand that, that, that we, as we interact with the world, we're supposed to be breathing in God and we're supposed to breathe, breathe out the bad. And in the process of breathing, there's always a portion out of our exhale that is still good oxygen. That's the reason you can do CPR in people can do it because you can you can actually infuse them with oxygen you infuse god into other people's lives no matter how much you, mistakes you make you, there's the holy spirit's what does it not you okay so let's move on then he said i am again the bread of life okay what did we need we needed air uh, we needed water we needed life we needed air for the breath of life. Then he says, I am the bread of life. You, we need food, okay? And that 1,200 calories a day that I was talking about at the very first, that 1,200 calories a day being able, is, you, you ladies, are, you, can eat, you can live on a whole lot less. And us guys, uh, some of us need to, need to live on a whole lot less. And, and some of us, uh, uh, you know, probably could be up in what you, what you get. The main thing is, is it's God's going to give you what he wants. I, I, I've said this before, but I really think it, you know, is, is, is I think God puts us all on a journey of our own. I don't think we ought to be critical of anyone else, whether they're, whether they're thin or whether they're overweight. It, I don't think that's our business. I think our business is to ask God to interact with all of us as he wills, and let God interact with that, that person, okay? So I'm real particular about that. We just need to know. Now, when it comes to the bread of life, um, uh, you know, uh, we need to understand what the scripture says about the bread of life. Now, in, in, the, in, the, uh, um, uh, in the interaction with Satan in the wilderness, I didn't put this in there, but what was it that Satan tempted him to turn the stones into bread so that he could so that he could live well jesus is life he is the bread he didn't need satan to, what a stupid thing for satan to tempt him to do whenever he's talking to the bread of life he's trying to tempt him to make bread on the ground so he can eat he'd already you know jesus has already proven satan knew who jesus was don't don't get don't 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 make that mistake satan knew who jesus was and he and he was fearful of him but he he blundered and, he, and he, he tempted him to do the, make the bread of life there. And Jesus told him that man doesn't live by every breath and talking about just the food, but he says by every word of God that proceeds out of their mouth. Let's tie it together. He said in his word in John chapter six, verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Think about this. If, if he's talking about bread that is so good that we would never hunger again, that's what your salvation is. You never need again to encounter that. If you, now, I really believe this, if, and hear me, please. 
A lot of people say, well, I don't believe in, in, in uh, once saved, always saved. They're talking about eternal security. I don't, they don't believe that. Well, think about this. I don't believe that a person who really truly is saved can ever lose their salvation. Okay? And the reason is based on scripture all the way through. But the point being, if you could lose your salvation, you never had it. If you can turn around and walk away from God and, and never feel the pull of the Holy Spirit to pull you back, you never feel the, that draw of God, then you never were saved. Okay, so the point is, is that the bread of life is so important that it would bring eternal life. John, uh, John uh, 6, 51 says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Now we've got the interaction with the children of Israel. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him for the life of the world is my flesh. Now then, here's an interesting thing. He's talking about the manna. He's talking about the fact that he is the bread of life given to the children of Israel in the wilderness. And the manna was for them to see that he was the out of the rock, the living water, out of the off, off the ground, he was going to be the bread of life and the manna. They, they're so ignorant, they're saying, what is it? And he's trying to tell them, I am the bread of life. Consume the, the, the things of me and you will have eternal life. And yet they rejected it and they would not do what he said. And they ended up wandering in the wilderness because of it. So he, he says he was the bread of life that provided to them everything they needed. And yet they missed it. Okay. Now then look at this. Uh, in, in, in the interaction that we've talked about, he also told Satan, he says, uh, man does not live by bread alone. And he says, I, it is not by bread. I, I wrote down, it is not by bread, but by taking the bread of life that we gain eternal life. Okay. So it's Jesus again. And now we've got come to light and we come to the understanding that we need light in our lives to be able to live, we have to have light. John 8, 12 said, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Here's another I am. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I'm constantly being told by Christians, well, I just don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Okay, you don't have to do with your life anything. What you need to do is submit to a God who loves you, let him light your path, and then submit to wherever he takes you. Do you think for one minute, now I know this is, I know I'm getting a little bit harsh here, but I just want you to think about it. What makes you think for one minute that if you ask God to direct your paths, and you give yourself to him that whenever the light shines on your pathway and you start taking a step after a step, do you think that God is not able to take you where he wants you to go? Uh, that's, that's, that's ludicrous. We need to be able to understand he is the light. And we have to have light to live. That tells me that Jesus' life was the light for everyone around him. And that which means that he was, he, was, he, he was revealed as God in the plans. And he showed us the way back to God in what, in what he did. He died for our sins. He is resurrected in that. By the way, if, if you go through and really look at the scriptures, every time there was a momentous occasion with Jesus Christ, there was light. There was the light of God in the, in the, in the, in the tent of meeting in the wilderness. There was the light of God. The column of fire was the light of God in that. There was the Shekinah glory of God. There was a, the, the light in the, on the Mount of Transfiguration. There was, he, he over and over told them that he was the light. And so we just need to no longer struggle with what he said. We need to submit to what he said and accept it and realize that he is the true light. And 
when we experience light, there, here's a challenge, here's a warning. He says, he says in Matthew 6, 23, a little bit of warning. He said that, that we, the, the light of God should show through our eyes. And he says it this way. He said, but when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. If your eye's good, it's going to be filled with light. If your eye is, dark, is bad, it's filled with darkness. And then he turns around and he said, if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep is that darkness? You know, if we are living a life for Jesus Christ, we're going to be the light to everybody around us. We're going to, our light's going to shine around, not, not because you have generated light like we've studied before, but rather that you are an, a reflector of light. The best illustration for the Christian is the moon in the sense that, in the sense that we are not the source of light from the sun, that's, that's God. And, and what we are is the moon shining almost all the time on the earth and illuminating what is that you, you go outside in the in the in the in the full moonlight and when you go outside and it's you can see color and the, you know you can walk around your place without a headlamp or nothing else you we take that for granted that is a good illustration of how we should be they may be in darkness or the people around us may be in darkness but if we will just do our job reflecting the light of God, it will illuminate around them enough for them to find the true light. You know, we are attracted to the sun. Uh, matter of fact, in, in God's word, he warns them not to worship the sun because they were so attracted to it. But the reason why they were attracted, you know, have you ever, have you ever turned around and, and, and looked directly into the sun by, by mistake? And the reason is, is because light will always attract our attention. Uh, you look out in the pastures whenever I go outside at night and I, and I see a light moving around out there. I want to know where is that guy and what's he doing out there? And is he on my property or the neighbor's property? If he's on the neighbor's property, he's out there doing something in the dark. I got, they, those poor guys from Rimrock, they work 24 hours a day, I swear they do. But you'll, you'll look out there and you'll see him driving across the pasture. And, and it's, you know, even though it's miles away, your eye is attracted to that light. The reason is, is because it's just natural for us to be attracted to the light of God. And guess who God chose to reflect that light so that people are attracted. And again, when they're attracted, don't mistake the fact that they're impressed with you. Understand you, it is so that you can direct them to the true light of God. He says, he said, let that light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Not you, your father. Okay. So let's just, let's just get this down. If all the earth gets its energy from the light of the sun, then it can be said that the Christian gets his light from the sun, the S-O-N. We are, we are to gather all the light we can. So what do we need to live? We need, we need uh, all, we put it back together and we see water and air and food and light. The, those are the things that we really have to have in our life. And yet whenever we really get to looking at it in scripture, Jesus is trying to tell us all you really need is him. All you really need is Jesus in your life. Everything else is bonus. Everything else is challenge. But it's Jesus that you need. And so if I get this right, everybody was right at the beginning. Because we, all we need is all of these four things and we get them all through Christ. And the only way you can have Christ in your life is to submit your will to God confess your sins as 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 heinous before a, a, a holy god and declare them that you're going to let him forgive you of those sins and then turn around and walk away from them and live a life submitted from then on to god live a life submitted to him and when you do that he will change your life 
He will use you when you don't think you're usable. He will put in your pathway people that will get something from you. Make sure they get the light of God. Make sure they get the air of the Spirit of God. Make sure that they feed on the Word of God around you and that they, they have that flowing water flowing from them. Isn't that great? See, that's all a Christian has to do. That is what being a witness is. It's just showing what has happened to you, to everyone around you. So, all they need is Jesus, and you've got Jesus. It's a no-brainer. All you got to do is give them Jesus. Let's all stand. Let's all stand and let's be uh, d dismissed, but we're going to dismiss with a song. But I want to keep that challenge in front of you. I'm not going to leave it alone. And that is, uh, you need Jesus, but more importantly, those around you need Jesus. And you're it. Because you're the one God put there in their pathway. So just smile and say, here we go. Let's just, let's, 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 let's sing. Let's sing if you would. That's all right. Let's get, let's, let's get that piano trained. Okay. <laughs> He is, how do you, what's the first, what's the first one? He is Lord. It won't come, it won't come. <laughs> there it is. There we go. He is Lord. He Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's try it one more time, okay? Can we do go back to it again? He is Lord. Think about that. He's the ruler of your life. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to be children of God. We thank you for the, 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 the testimony of who you are in our lives. We thank you for living in us and moving in us and, 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 and reaching out to others around. I pray right now, the most important thing I can think of in all this service is this invitation to come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. This invitation to know that whenever you do possess him as your savior, he, to allow him to be the, the, the very elements of, that you need, that we need for you, God, to be able to, to tell others and to share Christ with others in our lives. For we ask, Lord, for you to go with us to our homes and be uh, a blessing to others around us that we would not forget to just interact with others. And Father, when we are in front of others, that we would be patient, that we would be loving, that we would be filled with joy, and that it would not be all about us, but it would be about you, so that they can go home with a touch of the Holy Spirit too. We ask you to be our, our, our witness in our, in our life, in our breath. In Jesus' name. Amen.